This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, minions. Hello. Oh, God, another person with... <laughs> That, that makes three women in my life that I know that have minions now. There's Diamond, <laughs> and then there's Jillian, and now there's you. I don't think I have as many minions as they do, though. Yeah. Although, to be fair, Hagen does have an advantage over both you and Jillian. She can actually create batches of her own minions whenever she wants. What, is she a mad scientist? It's Diamond Hagen. She has a minion-producing thing, so... <laughs> You know, <laughs> she she has that capability. Hagen's like, fuck you, I do what I want. That's right. <laughs> oh, and, and and speaking speaking of fuck you, I do what I want. Um, apparently, we, we we hear that politicians are all you know they get hypocritical about different things. You know, like oh, you can't do this, but you know we'll go out and do this. This mainly applies to things like prostitution and gay sex. But uh, Leland Yi, have you heard of this guy? Oh my god, I was just reading about this guy this morning. <laughs> yes. I, I was like, we better have this on the show because it was beautiful story. Yes, I don't have the full story on hand, but I wanted to at least mention it because it is hilarious. Uh, for those who don't know, Leland Yi, he is one of the anti-violent video game fuckers from California. I think it was a senator? I think he is? Yeah, I think so. But... um. <laughs> But at the time the Hot Coffee mod for GTA 3 came out, he was like, well, we need to stop the selling of M-rated video games and violent video games to children, even though that technically doesn't happen, because if you sell something that's marked for adults to a child, isn't that already, like, illegal? So it's already there. But, um... But he was, he was on the forefront of this, and of course, all, it got struck up and down all over the courts, ruled, ruled unconstitutional. And uh, just recently, it came out that uh, he was arrested for corruption and participating in organized crime. <laughs> he was actually trafficking firearms. Uh huh. <laughs> because video games are what's violent in our country. <laughs> Right. Never mind the fact that you're trafficking real goddamn guns, you know. Oh, my so. God. And apparently there was, like, this five-year FBI sting that had been, like, set up and had been going on. And I think that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just remember, you know, children don't play video games with violence in it. Wait till you're an adult and join the mob. Pretty much. Uh, it's like, they sorry. For real. Yeah. And then, you know, you could see for yourself that if you shoot a person and kill them, money doesn't just pop out of them. You have to actually dig for it yourself. And you can't just press a button to do it. You actually have to dig through there, which means, oh my god, you might actually have to touch a penis. You might have to loot a body, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Which, by the way, don't go looting bodies. Yes. That's just creepy. That is creepy. <laughs> oh, so god damn. The, a lot of different things happened this week, a lot of things that didn't happen this week, as weeks tend to go. But I'm going to get my shout-out out of the way because I really want to share this one because uh, 331 E-Rock over on YouTube. I don't remember if I've mentioned him on the show before, but I'm definitely mentioning him now. He is a YouTube musician who makes metal covers of all sorts of different tunes, video games, anime. He did the, uh, he did the metal cover for Attack on Titan. Ooh. A while back, and it's I, you awesome. know I actually heard that one. Yes, it is so awesome. And just recently, he did a cover of "Live in La Vida Loca." Oh, really? Yes. And if you haven't heard it, you should go listen to it because it sounds awesome. That speaks to me on a spiritual level. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's like it's like childhood combines with metal. <laughs> Oh, but it is it is awesome. You should go check it out. So it's 331 E-Rock over on YouTube. Check them out. And I'm going to guess you have no shout-outs this week. Uh, no no shout-outs to anybody. I do want to do a little bit of self-promotion, though. Hooray! Um, 
because uh, this time next weekend, um, all next weekend is going to be uh, the Wizard World St. Louis Comic Con. Oh. oh my God, I'm so excited. I'm going to be there all weekend volunteering. And then uh, after my shifts are over, I'm going to uh, be walking around as Carmen Sandiego, uh, my, my staple cosplay. Um, so if anybody is in the St. Louis area who is going to actually be at the convention, I'll be there and say hello to me, and it's going to be amazing. Yes, and, and get a and get a hug from her. She she's really good at giving hugs. I'm very huggable. I have massive boobs to press against people. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. And and then the weekend after is actually Anime St. Louis, which is uh, this convention that I've been working for for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. And um, it's that's going to be uh, uh, in Collinsville, Illinois, which is like just over the river. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to be doing guest relations. Uh, I haven't, I don't know with who yet, but I'm going to be doing guest relations and wandering around all weekend and stuff. So if you're going to Anime St. Louis, I will be there and come say hello to me and get hugs. Yeah, which incidentally, they both fall on weeks you're not normally on the show anyway. <laughs> right, right. Well, I love God, this. Because if, <laughs> if you'd have been like, hey, you're up this week, and I've been like, JK, no, I'm not. Yeah, which, 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 is why I, which is why I produce a schedule the way I do, the little, little behind the scenes thing. You know, I, I put up a schedule. I, I try to rotate everybody, you know, once a week, try not to repeat if I don't have to. That way I try to give everybody a little bit of equal exposure. Well, then con season starts coming up. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty much after Gomer puts out a schedule, I go, actually, I'm at a con that weekend. Yeah. And that weekend. Yeah. And that weekend. Oh, yeah. Which, which at, with the timing that I do tend to put out these schedules, it's usually with enough time to where somebody could be like, oh, shit, you know? Like if they're, if, if, for example, cons, you know, whatever cons you go to, we can plan around those. And there you go. Makes it all seem seamless. Even though it's not even remotely. No. Meanwhile, you know, <laughs> it seems seamless to you guys, but behind the scenes, I'm sitting there like, ah, need to talk to you, or you, or you, or you, or you. <laughs> hey, hey, this is Podcasting 101. If it sounds good, there's probably a clusterfuck behind it somewhere. Yes, which means there must be a lot of clusterfuck behind what the fuck. Um, you know, those seem to run pretty smoothly. <laughs> it, it's just sort of like, oh, hey, Charlie's late this week. Okay, again. Uh We'll wait for 15 minutes. Yeah, well, while he... Third to the third, on the other hand, is the largest clusterfuck I've ever been involved in short of a convention. <laughs> you guys have, what, five or six people on, on, on air? At... We have we have six. On, on any given day, we can usually get four people to show up. On the days where we get six people to show up, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Yeah, and here I am thinking, okay, I, I just have, you know, well, although to be fair, I do have it in triplicate too. So, I mean, I've got this show with the rotating co-hosts. I've got constructive deconstruction where we're we're still trying to find a replacement co-host at this point. We've, we've been talking to a couple of people, we had one be able to be on a show, and then last week, because of scheduling problems, we had to postpone this other guy for this coming week. So it, it's just, it's kind of getting there. Right now, the most um, the most stable of them that doesn't revolve revolving co-hosts is Port Charlie Podcast, because hmm. it's been pretty much me and Namio the entire time. Nice. Although there's not many people in our circle that actually watches and enjoys General Hospital. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of limited to just me, Namio, and her dad, and, and oh, we're man. all on this, and we're all on the same site. So it's ah. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, a little behind the scenes thing, uh, especially since we're coming up on episode 100. Uh, this is what episode dun, 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 dun. Oh, that probably deserves a little more fanfare. Less, yes. Less foreboding fanfare. Yeah, just a little bit. Oh, we're up on what? Episode 97. Holy shit. Three weeks. Three weeks, as long as we don't have to, you know, skip ahead any any weeks. But three episodes. Let me, that that's a little bit better. <laughs> Cause, yeah. That's, uh, that's a safety way of putting it. Yes, very, very safely. Three more episodes. We'll hit 100. What are we going to do? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> she get drunk and play Never Have I Ever. Oh, wait, that was N3. Yeah, I don't want to copy that. <laughs> get drunk and play Cards Against Humanity. Oh, wait, didn't you guys do that too? Uh, No, we haven't. You guys have not done Drunk Cards Against Humanity. 
No, because Gonzo doesn't let us drink. E- even though we had an amazing time when we did it, he was like, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm like, come on! <laughs> well, to be fair, I don't, I don't like to drink when I'm doing my shows either. And the one time we actually tried, unfortunately, the footage was lost. And Holly can attest to this. The one time I got drunk on the show, it was like, yeah, this is – no, no. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the footage is, was lost, so I can't even put it as like an outtake or something somewhere. <laughs> so I'm un- just uh. – but yeah, so with all of that said, let's go ahead and hit to our news because we got some special stuff this week. Um, special awesome. Yes. Well, some of it might be. Some of it might not be. Oh, this one is out of – I can't – I don't remember the actual city or state for this one because for whatever reason, they didn't put it into the thing when I copy pasted it. Um, a mother trying to pick her special needs son up from school winds up in handcuffs and puts the school on lockdown. The furious mother came to News 4 claiming the school handled things all wrong. The incident took place at Walnut Groves Elementary School on Thursday when the mother came to help her son. I was lying in bed when I received a frantic phone call from the teacher. Michael was panicking, said Niakia Williams. Michael is Williams' son, and he suffers from Asperger's syndrome. After getting the call, Williams came up with the Ferguson Fluorescent School, came up, came up the Ferguson Fluorescent School, where she was buzzed in by school officials. I, I, I think they meant to say came up too. That was a bad typo. Where are you at? No, I think this has really got to be in my area because Ferguson and Florissant are near each other. Okay. So uh, no wonder I put it first. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's got to be St. Louis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw a teacher and she said, Miss Williams, what is wrong? I said, something is wrong with Mikey and proceeded to go straight to my son, said Williams. She got, into her, she got to her son's classroom and immediately started to console him, you know, like you should. The school principal then informed her she had she was violate she had violated school policy but by not signing in. I didn't sign the book, but I had to check on my son. You could bring the book, and she said, "Oh no!" And the principal said, "Oh no, I've already called the police." What? What? It's like you know what, and from what I'm understanding, she's a known parent at this school. They know who she is, but they still called the cops on her when she forgot to sign the book. So the school calls her to come in. She mm-hmm. comes in like the school asked, and they call the police on her, even though they know who she is and why she's there. Yeah, all because she didn't sign the book. I I think with 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 this particular case, yeah, okay, you know, if if it's absolutely vital, she signed that book. Fine. She offered to sign it if you could just bring it to her because, hi, consoling Aspie son here that's panicking. Sure. You know, bring the book. I'll sign it. There you go. You know who I am. You know I'm not going to do anything. And the thing is, she was, take, she was taken to the police station on trespassing charges, but it just uh, – really? Really? It, it's, it's – I understand you have these kind of things in place to protect the children. That's fine. But when it's a known parent, it's not necessary. The principal knows who the mother is. Obviously, the teacher knows who the mother is. Where's the problem? It was just, eh. There are some cases, yeah, protocol is a nice thing. But there are some points where protocol can just be tossed to the side for a little bit, especially in cases like this. It's like, especially, like, I really get it. I really get it. Because she could have had a gun. She could have come in there and shot everybody up and, and, and then, you know, whatever. But obviously that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So calling the police on her and having her arrested is a way extreme for the situation as it actually unfolded. If nothing else, you give the mom a slap on the wrist and you say, next time you really need to do this, because if you don't, then we have to call the police. That's our our rules, our laws, or whatever. Yeah. You know, you like you take some level of, you know, calmness in this situation. You say, hey, this is what you should have done. Next time do it because there are consequences for the actions. And the mom learns something. No, now she's gonna sue the school. That's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Because just you don't do no, just ah. Uh, 
and 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 the woman is saying that she felt like she got arrested for being a concerned parent. And while that's obviously not true, you know, she was arrested because of some stupid school rule. Feelings are feelings, and it's just ah. Uh... Yeah. What what kind of message does that send to the other parents who are obviously going to find out? Mm-hmm. They're going like, to say, oh, now I can't even go in and see my son. This is going to be on the next, you know, board of, you know, the PTA meeting and everything. This is going to cause them way more trouble than it's worth. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I look forward to seeing any kind of follow up from this one. Oh, and going one state over. Hi, Kansas. Oh, lawmakers in Kansas have tabled Governor Sam Brownback, a Republican, by the way his election year proposal to make all-day kindergarten available to all. A Republican doing something right? Holy shit. House Speaker Ray Merrick of Stillwell, also a Republican, said that now is not the year for the initiative, which would have compelled schools statewide to offer all-day kindergarten programs. And you guys can't see this, but in, in my file, I bolded and turned red what I am about to say next. Conservatives also complained that all-day kindergarten programs would be abused by poor families as a substitute for daycare sans academic rigor. I'm sorry, they've just... Uh, that's kind of what kindergarten already is. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, guess what? You drop your kids off, your taxes pay for the school anyway, so it's not like it's completely free. Your taxes go to it, so and, and you get to go to work, have a social life, whatever. You know, your kids are there, and at the kindergarten, your kids are learning. It's been a while since I've been in kindergarten, but I seem to remember learning shit while I was there. Yeah, I definitely remember learning stuff. I, I have friends who work at various daycare centers that... Like, you can't even go to daycare without learning something. You're going to learn something in kindergarten. I don't understand how this would be abused by poor families. I if, don't... You have, if you have the opportunity to put your child in school and educate them and not have it fuck up your schedule, yeah, anybody would do that. Yeah, I would. I would gladly do so. In fact, guess what? Again, we have six kids living here, four of which my parents are, are raising, foster kids, and all four of them are in school, especially that youngest one. The youngest one is three years old. We have a pre-K program here all day, and you know what? It, it, it makes the house so much quieter, and it is so much easier to do these kinds of productions, podcasts, videos, let's plays, without little kids running around making noise and trying to pop into your room just because they want to say hello and don't understand that you're trying to work. And they're getting an education at the same time. They're also learning how to deal with people outside of the house. They're, deal they're, they're getting that social interaction. Yeah, socialization is kind of important. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't pretend to be a teacher or, you know, an educator of any kind, but... I think people don't like this because it involves paying teachers more to 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 work more, I guess. Like, it just doesn't make sense to me why kindergarten was always like half a day. I've never understood that. Yeah, I mean, the only – when I came – when we moved down here, I think it was back in 95, I learned – I eventually learned that – I don't remember if it was in place then or if it was eventually instituted, but kindergarten down here is all day. At least, at least in Graceville. And when I first learned of that, I thought that was just weird because I went to kindergarten up in Indianapolis where they had half day. I went in the afternoons. It was just – so to see these all-day kindergartens is like, holy shit, mind blown. The, the, the southerners have something over the northerners here. <laughs> <laughs> I, Although, went to, uh, I went to a school, and my school was on base, and I totally get – like in a military setting um, – why you would have a.m. kindergarten and p.m. kindergarten, because if you only have two kindergarten teachers to teach an entire base's worth of children, then you do have to break it up in time period so that the teacher isn't overwhelmed. Right. I and totally get that. Oh, yeah. It, but like with a lot of when you have more resources, 
um, like a big school district would have, mm -hmm. then why not just have all day kindergarten with one teacher and you just have to make that teacher, you know, work a little bit harder. And I get it. Little kids are way hard to work with and you tear your hair out and all this other stuff. Um, and so maybe, I don't know, maybe that's part of it. Maybe, maybe, maybe teachers don't want to, but I don't know. I think, I just think it sounds like a good idea because I think the whole, a, like, um, morning and afternoon kindergarten really, really causes a lot of struggle for parents who have to be there to send their kid off to school and pick their kid up from school and given and so that parent can't hold down a regular job uh until the child is out of kindergarten right so you're you're limiting that person's chances of having a, a decent job and since most of the time that parent who's going to stay home with the kids is the woman it, it yeah yeah it, it, this goes deep this can go deeper and deeper and uh, as, as kind of a side note the last paragraph here the republican lawmakers so citing an injunction by the Kansas Supreme Court to correct an unconstitutional $129 million disparity between funds granted to wealthy and poor districts claimed that the all-day kindergarten program was just not doable in the current economic climate. I, I, I think you know if, 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 if you can – you can probably take the money from somewhere else that's not needed um, you know, and put it there, you know, you know like, like, like ease up on, on – on, just, just different things. You just pick something, take the money from it, put it towards the education. There you go, problem solved. But they say no. Once we've completed the task, but that 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 the injunction thingy, uh, then there won't be enough funding. And I say bullshit. Get the money from somewhere else, or <gasps> raise taxes a little bit. I'm sure if you're or... if you have to raise taxes a little bit for education, a lot of people will jump on board with it. Oh, not in this part of the country, my friends. Let me tell you a little story about the state of Missouri. Uh-oh. So, so we have this thing in, in – uh, and this is going to be a little bit of a tangent, but um, where there's tons and tons of poor schools. And if these schools don't keep up their their – you know what their standards then they become unaccredited which means that if you want to get into a college or something they're like well you didn't receive a proper education because your school is unaccredited uh -huh. so the taxpayers were given the option to raise the taxes by like 0.02 percent or something which would be like 27 extra cents on your monthly bill or something or let the school become unaccredited and then the then the state has to pay for all of these schools or the county has to pay for all of these kids from these schools to go to different schools. So so, so okay. it's the difference of 27 extra cents or ruining the lives of all, all of these children and all of these teachers and basically ruining all of any chance you'd have at all for anybody to move into your neighborhood and better any any part of the area. Uh, because nobody's going to go to this school. No one's going to move to this area because they can't put their kids in that school. Over 27 cents. 27 cents. cents. <laughs> like, oh, my God. What the fuck? And they, they voted against it. And now all the parents who voted against it are complaining about what a problem it is for everybody. And and, and all of the politicians are like, yeah, no kidding. It's, it's, it's 27 cents. Even yeah. even the more poverty stricken families that are working three jobs can afford twenty seven extra cents. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. They they willingly let their entire school system fail because they didn't want to pay a couple like a a, a a fucking quarter more, a quarter like in the pocket. You used to go buy half a pack of gum these days because you can't afford yeah. anything with a quarter now. But yeah. Now, now so you said ridiculous. Now you said it was tacked on to what monthly tax bills or or whatever. I I I don't know. I I don't know what it was tacked on to. It was it was just raising the taxes and the, the taxes would have been like I yeah I was like something like twenty seven cents more per three hundred or per, per hundred dollars or something. Okay. So for your I don't know. So, it, it's not a lot of money for anybody. No, because I have a coin bag that that has. Probably enough for a year's worth of that sitting on on my bookshelf somewhere. <laughs> and I was like, "Here, I will give this to you for a whole year's worth of this extra tax." Now shut the fuck up and stop complaining. 
Speaking of, of people complaining about extra fees or extra taxes, hi, Walmart. Uh, Walmart Stars, Stores Incorporated is suing Visa Incorporated, which, by the way, Visa is responsible for a lot of the credit debit cards you see. I know I have a Visa debit card through my bank. I'm assuming I, you do as well. I do too, yes. Yes. But Walmart is suing Visa over fees that it charges the world's largest retailer when customers use a credit or debit card. Walmart said Visa conspired with banks to illegally fix and inflate fees that retailers pay on tra card transactions and that the fees cost U.S. retailers and shoppers more than $350 billion between 2004 and November 2012. $350 billion in eight years. That doesn't seem too awful bad if you break it down. Especially since if they're only coming a little bit from each customer, that sort of thing. So, yeah. Walmart's complaint was filed Tuesday with the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Arkansas. San Francisco-based Visa declined to comment on the suit. Retailers have long complained about the billions of dollars in swipe or interchange fees that they've had to pay, which average to about 2% of the price of a purchase. 2%. Two cents for every dollar. And they are complaining about this. And this, this is the average, 2%. You know, they have a choice. They can either eat that cost or pass it along to the customer. Yeah. This is Walmart. I'm amazed they're not passing that on to the customer. Uh-huh. It's just, just, and you know what? Walmart can afford to eat that cost. Yeah. I mean, other retailers probably can't. Um, and, and I know, like, at least from a convention perspective, when people, um, like, charge for, you know, put their tickets on a credit card and stuff, you just, you kind of accept that there are going to be those those uh, those fees. Mm -hmm. um, because it's, it's better to eat some of that cost, if not all of it, than to pass it on to your customer and, you know, potentially lose customers um, because they don't want to pay the extra amount of money. Yeah. And, and and again, it's two cents per dollar. Oh, my. I am not going to be able to pay. I am not going to be able to take on the entire dollar in profit. Oh, my. Cry me a river, Walmart. And even the smaller ones, the ones that can't eat it and have to pass it on to their customers. I would think that a lot of customers and I'm not talking like, you know, outside of conventions. I'm talking like your mom and pop stores. I'm sure the customers would would likely understand, okay, it's because of credit card fees because you know what? These businesses like Visa, MasterCard, or what have you, they've got to be able to stay afloat too. And not everybody is going to have a credit card that they can just pay off at their leisure. Like like you and me, we have debit cards. So mm -hmm. our money comes directly from the bank and goes through Visa, and they process it, and there you go. They've got to make some money back somehow. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to do things like have the debit cards or make it convenient for people to to swipe the card and then pay it back later you know it's either you pay for it or it's not gonna be there right and 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 a judge in december according to the article approved a settlement over card fees between 19 merchants and visa and mastercard settlement was originally valued at 7.25 billion but shrank to about 5.7 billion because some retailers opted out and Walmart was not a part of the group, and they, along with Macy's, Target, and the National Retail Federation Trade Group, have opposed the settlement, saying it will do nothing to reduce swipe fees or keep them from rising in the future. Which, probably not, but even so, I mean, you have inflation. Inflation is going to happen. And yeah, I mean, short of some sort of federal regulation... It, it's not going to really make a difference because these these are companies who provide a service and they have the right to charge whatever they want for that service. And exactly, and it's uh, it's like, hey, you want to you want to do this? Here, you you pay us a little bit of money. We'll we'll provide this for you. And it's two percent. That's what really gets me. It's two percent. I mean, that money really does add up, but the. No one, no company, no retailer is ever going to get that full dollar out yeah. of their out of their sale. It just doesn't happen. There's so many things that cause you to lose money in retail that like the swipe fees, they're just, you know, 
I, I guess maybe that's a like a, a problem that they can actually attempt to tackle because there's so many other things that you can't, you know, you can't actually help, you can't change. But yeah. you know, like your taxes. But, yeah, like like your taxes. Um, there's there's like insurance because you have to have every like piece of product in your building covered with insurance. Mm -hmm. So you're paying some money to have that product in your building. Oh yeah. You know. Not to mention the cost of actually buying the product. Yeah, yeah. And then if you don't sell it, then you're just sitting on it while the while the product uh, is lowered in value every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then at some point in time, you either sell it at a reduced rate, hopefully still above the cost that you bought it, or you just send it back to wherever you got it from in order to maybe make some money back off of it. Oh, yeah. So r retail is very complex like this. Mm -hmm. Um so you never really get that full dollar of, of whatever dollar you sell. Um, so maybe this is Walmart trying to control the one thing that they can control because they can't force their customers to buy something right. when they want them to buy it. But they could maybe, maybe they have the uh, a case here. Yeah, which I, I honestly, with all of this, especially when it's coming from the bigger retailers, it's a big case of wham for me. Because it's, oh yeah. my god, 2%. We should only pay 1%. We shouldn't have to pay for this. We have all the money in the world. That means you can pay more. Pay up, motherfuckers. It is uh. really hard to feel sorry for them when they're just, you know, like, rolling around on their beds made of stacks of $10,000, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and you know what? This is also speaking as somebody who worked, you know, a long time ago, uh, my family owned a gas station. And we had the credit card thing. We had to go through all the fees and stuff as well. And you know what? We we adjusted. We didn't have we didn't have the obviously millions of dollars that came in, but we adjusted. We were able to just you know we swiped. We all understood. Yeah, okay. We may have to eat some of that, or some of that may have to be put into the the cost or whatever. I think we mostly ate the the fees though so and it also wasn't a factor of everybody using a goddamn card most people i think they paid in cash so it wasn't as much of a concern for us but when people used a card we understood yeah we have this if if you want a great example look at um look at like etsy or one of those things where you're you're hosting your product on a site and that site you know charges a fee every time you make a purchase yeah. And is it great? No. No, it's not great. But is it fair? Yeah, it's kind of fair. Because you shouldn't nothing comes for free. And so you yeah. see like a lot of people nowadays, like a lot of small businesses and stuff, they're not even getting like a like a, a register and a POS or anything. They're just getting those little squares um where you can swipe cards on a tablet. Mm -hmm. And you just pay a little a fee for that, and that's fair, because yeah. you're you're saving all of this money in a different area. So Walmart just needs to suck it up, I think. Yeah, they do, they do. And other and other big corporations like them just suck yeah. it up and move on. You know, I think they're so used to being given breaks by everybody else, by like by like tax breaks and you know incentives and stuff to move into places i think they're so used to getting their way that they just <clears throat> can't handle the idea of not getting their way they're spoiled and we spoiled them oh my god they're the millennials of uh, of retail <laughs> <laughs> there you go the millennials of retail <laughs> god almighty oh oh it's interesting you bring up god almighty Oh, this one, I believe, is over in Africa, I want to say, because cause they, they, they sound very – the names are very African-sounding. Uh, there was drama at an apostol apostolic church in Cowdery Park suburb in Bulawayo last Saturday when irate congregants reportedly ran amok and severely bashed a man they suspected of using Mubobobo. To have supernatural sex, or better known as Bluetooth sex, with female congregants during church service. Mubobobo? 
<laughs> no, now I'm just picturing bo 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 that fucking crazy ass an- anime going around having sex with uh having supernatural Bluetooth sex with Congress, and I just I can't I can't <laughs> I cannot handle this. Oh, the bruised man, whose sources identified as Tafara Mukoto, had to seek refuge from a neighboring house to avoid further beatings. Mubobobo is a type of magic where a man uses charms to perform a sexual act on an unsuspecting woman. Often, victims can feel themselves being violated and even get to briefly enjoy the encounter before coming out of the spell and regaining control. Several cases of this African Bluetooth sex technology hey, I was right, have, have been reported in the past, and it is hard for police and victims to prove the claims beyond reasonable doubt. So, so what it sounds like is... Somebody had it out for this guy, and what better way to do it than and then you know claim that he was, I guess, psychically it's raping. Craft. Yeah, it's like it's like what? Oh. This is this is so ridiculous. It's pretty funny and kind of disturbing because this is like this is how the Salem witch trials happen. Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, let's see. A uh, member of the uh, Yvada, uh, whatever apostolic apostolic church, who identified himself as Mandiz- Mandzibaba Anthony, said some congregants suspected that Mukoto was up to no good when he was seen facially expressing excitement as he was standing in the crowd. Huh, yeah, because there could be no other reason for him to be excited, right? You know, I've never a- been excited in a crowd before. No, oh, me neither. But but that's a social anxiety thing. Yeah. But but even still, it's, it's like, really, you're in a church. A lot of people, when they go to church, they, they, feel, they feel the presence of the Lord, and guess what? That makes them a little excited. They're happy. God. Yeah. Oh, my Almighty. God. <laughs> <laughs> God, the uh, story is so much funnier than it should be. Yeah. What happened is that one female congregant started complaining that she was just feeling as if she was having sex with a man. She looked confused and troubled and told some elderly women of her suspicions. As, spelled somehow typoed as A-S-S, as the matter was being discussed among the women, Mukoto, who was seen constantly tapping his foot, suddenly bolted out from the crowd before we gave chase and managed to catch up with him. He was thoroughly beaten and had to seek refuge at a nearby house which is still under construction. And, and of course, he's claiming innocence, but the church members were not convinced, and they beat the shit out of him. Well, so he had a song stuck in his head, and he was tapping out the tune to the song stuck in his head. Yeah, and it, it doesn't say why he was, why he bolted. I mean, maybe maybe he heard murmurings that people were going to try and beat the shit out of him, but... Maybe he's guilty. That would be the craziest thing I've ever heard, but maybe he's guilty. That would be crazy. And it would be like, can you demonstrate that for anybody else? Because if so, then um, we'll have to find ways to guard against that. Because even if it's even if it's through witchcraft, rape is rape. God, I feel like this is on an episode of Supernatural. <laughs> or a hentai. I mean, either way. <laughs> and you know what? They've probably done it in, in some kind of hentai somewhere. I'm a thousand percent sure. Yeah, you've probably seen it. I haven't, but I'm a thousand percent sure it exists. <laughs> it's just, uh, and of course, they call it Mubobobo, which Mubobobo. is the silliest name ever. I'm not going to get off of this thing where it sounds like the anime, Bobobobobobobo. Bobobobobobobo. However many bows there are in that show, it's way too many. <laughs> oh, and the next one, take a shot. We're going to Port St. Lucie, Florida. Oh, boy. An intoxicated man, angered after he vomited on his own cell phone, took it out on his wife, holding a machete to her neck before firing a shotgun round over a responding officer's head, police reported. According to a police report, uh, the wife told police that he had a shotgun and was threatening to kill himself, at one point pointing the muzzle, putting the muzzle in his mouth before she pulled it away. A round discharged and punched a hole through the ceiling. The wife and daughter naturally escaped, and they ran the fuck away. Which I don't don't blame them at all. Uh, one reason I brought this in, up is really you 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 get drunk. Okay, that happens. You you get irritable when you're drunk. Sure, 
But going from, oh my god, I vomited on my cell phone, I'm going to beat a bitch. I, th I think even drunk, that that's a pretty big leap. At least as far as I'm seeing. Yeah, I mean, this is this is a level of irrationality that doesn't belong to drunk. There's that definitely sounds like something else is going on, and and maybe it's drugs, but you know, like you don't. Well, most people with normal hormone brain levels and stuff without major depression issues or something, most people don't want to kill themselves and murder people when they're drunk just because they're drunk. Like, no. there's got to be something weird going on. And hey, maybe it's drugs. Maybe maybe it's a serotonin level in the brain. I don't know. Yeah. And I could understand, you know, like being upset when something you're handling or something you're doing gets, you know, damaged or, or in this case, puked upon in some way. You know, because there have been times I would, you know, I would cook something in the kitchen, start bringing it back to my room, and I would trip up or have a case of Butterfingers and the food would fall all over the floor. I would be really, really pissed and I would want to hit something. I have no self control I had one of those moments today. Oh, see? It's just, it's, it's just, I can understand it, but at the same time, I have the self control to not do anything about that other than just bellow and scream. Because that's probably the safest course of action. Uh. It's, it's just, just so weird because I don't know any violent drunks. You know, everybody gets drunk differently, and I'm a happy drunk, and the more I drink, the better my Japanese gets. And then I have a friend who's one of those crying drunks who I've never seen him more emotional and sobby than when he's drunk. And then I have one of those, like, quiet drunks who just, you know, like, stares off into space and then falls asleep. You know, so, like, everybody gets drunk differently. Most people don't get homicidal and or suicidal. No. I I am I am kind of displeased to report that for the most part I don't think there's much change in me when I'm drunk because <laughs> it's really disappointing. It's like really I'm like this when I'm sober too. Oh, <laughs> although although I have been known to been banned from playing Cards Against Humanity if I'm drunk. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I play it best when drunk. Well, yeah. It, it's not because of how I was playing. It was just I kept interrupting everybody. Oh, I see. Yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and of course, I have no problems with memory, by the way. Hmm. Oh. We really should do a Drunken Cards Against Humanity online. Yes, we all should. We should do this. <laughs> oh. So, people in the holistic healing community don't like how they're being written about on Wikipedia. So I'm they started... Saying. So they start. <laughs> so they started a change.org pet petition asking that Wikipedia put policies in place for their nonsense to be taken just as seriously as actual science. You know they can just go in and edit it themselves. Yeah, the petition entitled "Jimmy Wales, founder of Wikipedia, create and enforce new policies that allow for true scientific discourse about holistic approaches to healing" ends with a pledge from all those who sign it not to donate to Wikipedia. The petition has 7,802 supporters as of this as of this article, so that leaves plenty of other people to still donate and keep Wikipedia up and running. And you can read the full petition over on change.org. As for Wales's response, no, you have to be kidding me. Every single person who signed this petition needs to go back to check their premises and think harder about what it means to be honest, factual, truthful. Wikipedia's policies around this kind of thing are exactly spot on and correct. If you can get your work published in respectable, respectable scientific journals, that is to say if you can produce evidence through replicable scientific experiments, then Wikipedia will cover it appropriately. What we won't do is pretend that the work of lunatic charlatans is the equivalent of true scientific disclosure. It isn't. God, I hope this is not like a, like, I really hope he said this, because that's amazing. I believe he did, because that is pretty damn awesome. And I can think, I can think of another group that really needs to take a good hard look at this. Oh, what are they? Oh, yeah. Creationists. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, the, just, you take this, take this response, apply it to your want to push the Bible and push your creationist theory into everybody's faces through science classes. It doesn't work that way. 
Okay. Can, can you produce evidence through replicable scientific experiments? And no, showing us where it says in the Bible it's not a scientific experiment. Oh, my God. Oh, so good. So yeah. amazing. Like, the fact that these people think that, oh, we're not being written about very nicely. We're going to make a petition with less than 8,000 people that's going to change the number one most used fucking website it's like the third most popular website in the whole fucking planet. Yeah, good because, luck with that. Because we don't know that we can edit Wikipedia. <laughs> That's the <laughs> thing. You can edit Wikipedia. Yeah. You know, and 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 if you do it right, nobody will even notice. <laughs> yes. Oh, crap. fucking people. Oh, 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 oh. so um. South Carolina, well, not not South Carolina, but uh, one of the senators in question is from South Carolina. Lindsey Graham, a Republican from South Carolina, and Representative Jason Chaffetz from Utah, also a Republican, on Wednesday introduced legislation to ban most forms of online gambling, ratcheting up a lobbying battle that pits casinos and lotteries against conservative donor Sheldon Adelson, I, th I think that is, to yeah. have – to have gaming on every smartphone on the country, I think it's just a bad idea, Shaffet said during a press event. Your wording. Careful of that wording. Because if you if you ban it as online gaming, you are going to have a whole bunch of nerds marching on Washington to beat the shit out of you. With keyboards. And mice. And possibly My Little Pony plushies. <laughs> and and if you haven't seen keyboards and mice these days, the gaming ones, oof, they're pretty big. Mm -hmm. Their bill would reverse a 2011 Department of Justice decision that opened the door for online gambling. The de that decision reinterpreted the Wire Act, a federal statute that had prohibited internet betting, by limiting its reach to sports. Honestly, when it comes to gambling, it's your money. Do with it as you will. Okay? If you have a gambling problem, there are groups for this. We don't need laws in place for this. You know, I mean, if, if you're if you're gambling and you're taken advantage of, especially illegally, there's laws on the place to punish whoever it was that snowed you. If you're just being a dumbass and the other person is on the level, then you're just being a dumbass. I'm sorry. Go to a group, save your money. And then come back when you can actually handle gambling. Not to mention, I really think online gambling is dumb because I barely trust my money in my own hands, mm -hmm. handing it to another human being who works in a store. Or let's say I decide to go to a casino. I barely even trust a casino where I can physically hand my money to someone. You really trust your money that, you know, is to some digital form on the other side of a computer somewhere? I sure as hell wouldn't. I oh. barely do any online shopping. I'm so wary of this stuff. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? That's fine. You don't, you know, again, it goes back to the point of it's your money. You do with it as you will. You don't want to gamble. You won't. Other people will disagree with you. Personally, if I'm going to do any kind of gambling, I'm either going to go play bingo or go get some of those scratch offs down to the convenience store. There's my gambling right there. <laughs> See, I, I actually live in an area, St. Louis doesn't seem like it, but there is a lot of gambling here. So we've got riverboat casinos and they're all stationary. Um, and there's just, there's mega hotels built around them and shopping and buffets and all this stuff. And there are laws put in place locally to not to, to really curb their business or anything, but just to do what the state can to not really, you know, like put them out of business or even curb their business, but just to protect the people who go there because gambling is, can be an addiction. Yeah. So they have, you know, simple rules like, you know, we, we have ads on, on the radio all the time about gambling addiction and there are signs about gambling addiction all over these locations. And then, you know, some of their profits um, go to the local area school districts and that's it. That's all we've got really going. You know, yeah. and you know what? Having you know requiring their profits to go to the school districts, fine. I am okay with that. It's a really great idea, and and so now 
you know, even though they're getting a, a little bit of their profits taken away, they get to look like heroes who are giving money to kids. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you know what other state does that? Florida. Florida. <laughs> yes. Florida, so, you did something right for once. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so I can, I can kind of see how there's not enough protection that you would have in a real life gambling area. Like, so a casino has these protections put in place to keep the, the cust the consumer, the gambler as safe as possible while still spending as much of their money as they're willing to do. Um, and I can see how you really wouldn't have that as much online until somebody, you know, creates some kind of federal, federal ruling on it. Um, but it, banning it really? No. It does not require banning, especially since people are going to find a way to do it anyway. You know, again, let, let's let's go with piracy. You know, piracy is a bad thing, especially you know you know just especially if you're pirating from somebody who's starting out. You know, it, it's it's still bad and illegal if you're pirating from a big studio, but it's even worse when it's somebody like Hart Fisher, for example, pirating from him. You don't do that. That's not cool. But that doesn't stop people from doing it, even with laws in place to scare or punish people into not doing it. It's going to happen. And honestly, as soon as you pass some law saying no online gambling, then you're going to have to write down a list of all the things that are considered online gambling. And the people who want to like run some online gambling are going to be the first people to look at that list and go, OK. Here's what I can get away with because it's not written down in, on this list. Mm -hmm. And you're going to spend way more time just adding things onto that list and having to revise this bill all of the time when you could just be so much easier to just put in a couple of simple regulations. Yeah, that's so much easier, and it uses so much less tax money. Oh my god, it's cheaper. You're going to save the citizens money and then you won't have to do all of these other things and run around like chickens with your head cut off and trying to fillet yourself with just your neck hole and that's really disgusting, I know, but it, it's just <laughs> that crazy. What kills me is that this is Republicans saying, "No, we we don't want somebody to make money. We we don't want businesses to thrive." Because, you know, usually Republicans are the ones who are like businesses do whatever you want don't tell me how i can and can't run my company unless i'm telling my employees what to do with their ovaries mm -hmm. but on the other hand this could really easily tie in with religion because that's what you know all the conservatives are all about is, is about mixing as much religion into their politics as possible and of course gambling is is you know a, kind of sinful so i can i can actually see why they they would want to stop this because god forbid people spend money in ways that is profitable for someone other than their constituents you know mm -hmm. whatever whoever's lining their pockets right now probably yeah. walmart or the cock brothers the, yes the cock brothers yes um and and by the way it's not all republicans behind this the two it's true that's true yeah because uh, in the article, they also list uh, Diane Feinstein of California, Democrat, and Tulsi Gabbard, Democrat of Hawaii, among some of the others that are supporting this bill. At least, yeah, it is. It is in support of this bill. So just just in the interest of full disclosure and fairness, yeah, it's not just Republicans, but uh, they are a decent part of it. Oh, and the last one. I just had to grab this because it's simply a screenshot of uh, some tabloid article. <laughs> and I can see this. Oh my god. Oh, uh, if I remember to, I'm going to try and put it up at this point in the video portion. Hopefully, hopefully I remember to do so. But uh, <laughs> the headline reads: "Sex with Greg's pasty boiled my bellend." This is British, by the way. It's a it's a pasty. A pasty. Yes. Huh. A pasty. Oh, wow. Oh, Sex with Greg's pasty boiled my bellend. My <laughs> now God. Howard fumes. I'm going to sue. That's amazing. <laughs> yes. And the gist of it is he went to this Greg's place, which is like a convenience store over in Britain. He got a couple of these, heated them up. I, I don't know if he heated them up or if they came already preheated or whatever. Point is, they were hot when he left, got home. They cooled a little bit. 
and you know he put them in the microwave. And somewhere between leaving the house and getting them home, or maybe even before leaving the house, he decided he was going to fuck one of these. <laughs> I don't know why, but hey, you know what? You're desperate. You want a warm hole. Fine. You know, to each your own. It's a victimless crime. So he put he put one in the microwave to kind of warm it back up because it had gotten cold. He American pied that little hot pocket. Yes, and that little hot pocket burned, literally. <laughs> It's it's just just okay, you know. It, it's weird and, and it's kind of gross to fuck a hot pocket, but if you're going to do so, let it cool down a little bit first. I mean, I mean, yeah, okay. Grabbing a hot pocket out of the microwave with your bare hand right as it's finished, that's gonna that's gonna leave a little of a burn. Ow, you know, that's fine. But those are your hands. The the skin is. is a little bit more equipped, not as sensitive as, say, a penis. <laughs> that is sensitive equipment down there, my friend. You do not want to stick that into a freshly microwaved hot pocket. <laughs> this is so great. It's, it is uh... insane. And, and now he's going to sue Greg's because they don't have a anything – and any kind of warning label that says you should not fuck these. <laughs> Don't put your dick in this. Like, like now they're going to have to put a warning label on it that says, please don't put your dick in it. Yes, it's just really. Because really, somebody needed that warning. It's, it's in, in the picture of this guy. If he just, he just looks like the kind of guy that just does not understand certain things. He, he definitely looks like a guy who's lonely enough to fuck a hot pocket. Yeah, and I will admit I have had my moments in my past where I've wanted to experiment, never with a hot pocket, <laughs> but I also knew how to do it safely. Safety is the key. He does not practice safety, obviously, and he's going to sue because of his dumbassery. When – well, let's, let's see. We're up to what? Seven billion people on this planet, give or take, <laughs> right? Seven billion people, six billion nine hundred ninety nine million nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine people understand you do not put your sensitive genitalia into a freshly microwaved hot pocket. He is the one dumbass that did not get the memo. <laughs> the the best part is uh <laughs> uh is just the reading the actual article um, it was then he realized far, far too late that microwaving process had raised the temperature of the sauce to something like that out of Icelandic lava. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like if you can find this article, it's it's gold. It's gold. It it's talking about the creamy white sauce interior of the pasty. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> it's great. Oh, but on that note, that is the end of our news, and, and hey, the end of our show. Oh, God, it was it was a good week. <laughs> it's been a good week. Oh, so if we wanted to find Kat on social media, where can we find her? You can actually find me over on Twitter at LabyrinthCat, and I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And um, you can also find me... Uh, over on one of my other shows, Nerd to the Third Power, on thatguywiththeglasses.com under the podcast tab. Sweet! And of course, you can always hear her on What the Fuck as well. Yes, indeed. And yes. you can find me at conventions, because it's convention season. Yes, if you're on the con circuit, say hello to her, give her a hug. Uh, and if you want to find me on the social medias, you can find me at gomer 21 X on Twitter, and also on Tumblr. I... I do both, and of course it's all linked and everything, so you cannot escape me if you just handle me on one. You will get both. <laughs> I love cross-posting. Uh, you can find me and my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. You can also find the Facebook pages for both of those sites, obviously on Facebook. Come say hello. There are a bunch of us that would love to meet you and get to know you, and, and you hope you enjoy our stuff. And, of course, if, if you're inclined and you want to help out monetarily for new equipment, new site upgrades and site space and all of that, 
then uh, I have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash gomer21xx. And also my girlfriend, the lovely Becky, also has her own Patreon page where she accepts commissions for her artwork and animation. Award-winning animator, by the way, which is at patreon.com slash beckyhop. Oh. And with that, thank you guys for listening. I hope you come and join us next time, and we should be here next time. At least I should be. I think next week is Omega's week. So we shall be here. Hope you will join us. And until then, this is Gomer, the Ranting Thespian, with the cat, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.